Welcome to this Easter morning worship service netcast. In the name of our creator, welcome. We have come into this holy morning to celebrate the mystery of Easter, the joy of our salvation, and the hope of our faith. Our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, died, and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again. He is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We welcome again this morning Michael Leach to be our guest organist for this very special worship service. And now let us sing hymn number 161, Welcome Happy Morning, verses 1 to 3. Welcome to the Story Connection. Today is Easter Sunday. It's a day when in other years, we often gathered our families around the dinner table. Not all families live near one another, so that made the day even more special, to have family and friends joining us for Easter dinner. Here is a story for you about a little boy named Sam. Company came for dinner but Sam had a problem to solve. I wonder how you would solve the problem Sam had. Carrots for the company. Sam looked across the table at the company, but his eyes were mostly on the dishes of vegetables. 
His mom and dad were out in the kitchen serving the rest of the food. Sam felt he was old enough to help serve the food, but his parents had sent him to sit and wait at the table instead. I don't like carrots, Sam said to the company. I have never liked carrots and I never will. I like peas, but I don't like carrots. The company smiled politely. Do you like corn, they asked. Yes, said Sam, I like corn. And he paused, but I don't like carrots. Outside, Sam thought he saw a rabbit at the window. It was looking at the table. He could hear rattling noises in the kitchen. Mom and Dad chose the carrots, Sam informed the company. I would never choose carrots. He paused again. I chose the beans. Do you like beans? asked the company. Oh, yes, answered Sam. I only don't like carrots. At the window, the rabbit kept looking at him. It never blinked. Into the dining room came Mom and Dad, each carrying a dish. Sam stretched his neck to see what was in the dishes. That's a salad, he told the company. I like that a lot better than carrots. The rabbit at the window was still staring. It shifted its position in the snow. Dinner was delicious. Sam ate a lot of salad and a lot of beans. He kept looking at the one carrot his mom had put on the plate for him to try. Mom had said, as you get older, your tastes change. Just try one to see if you like them yet. I never will like them, thought Sam. He looked at the window and the rabbit shook its little head. When I get older, I will have exactly the same tastes. One of the grown-ups said, it seems a bit hot in here, don't you think? Sam jumped to his feet. Don't you worry about a thing, he told the company. I'll take care of it right away. Sam climbed on a chair and unlatched the window. He turned the little handle which would open it up and let the fresh air in. Thank you, Sam, said Dad. That was very thoughtful of you. But Sam was not listening. He was picking up his empty plate to take to the kitchen sink and he was watching the rabbit outside the window, happily eating a carrot. Sam was smiling, and so, he thought, was the rabbit. Many of us are thinking today of the people we wish we could sit with and have a meal together. Let's hope next year there can be company at your table. And for today, I hope you are looking forward to enjoying a meal with the people closest to you. Let us pray. O holy, merciful God, in whom there is life and being and hope eternal, we seek to give you praise and thanks, glory and majesty, for you are the worthy one. May we ever be closer to you in spirit as we reflect on the mystery of the resurrection and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we bring you glory, and may our worship be a fragrant offering in your presence. Amen. And now let us hear a special piece of music, Fairest Lord Jesus, played by Bill Leggett and Sheila Balls.
Thank you, Bill and Sheila, for playing that beautiful song. Let us now pray. O oh God, we seek your face to be in closer union with you, to please you by our living, to live in harmony and at peace with others, with compassion in our hearts, and to be good stewards of all we are and have and of this world. Where there is sadness, may we bring joy and empathy. Where there is darkness, light. And where there are lies and deception, truth and life. There is not peace everywhere, and all pain has not been removed. Help us help those crying in the wilderness to give food to the hungry, health and medicine to the sick, and clean water to the thirsty. Help us to be instruments of peace. We pray in this moment of silence for specific causes and individuals that are heavy upon our hearts. O oh God, help us to be a strong agent for righteousness and justice, to stand against prejudice, inequality, racism, and oppression, and cleanse us so that we might be a mighty force for you. Amen. And now let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, again, we will listen to Bill and Sheila as they play near the cross. Thank you, Sheila and Bill, for playing that beautiful song. Let us now hear the words of the Lord from the scriptures. Psalm 34. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. 
The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is he who comes refuge in him. And from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, we read these words. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had entered and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood behind them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. May God bless the reading of his word to us today. And let us now sing hymn number 155, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
Thank you, Michael, for that playing of that beautiful, inspiring hymn. I don't know about you, but Music always thrills my soul and draws me closer in worship to our God. Today's message is just entitled The Resurrection. Today we greet each other at the beginning of our worship service with those amazing joyful words proclaiming, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, hallelujah. Today is Easter the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the highlight of the Christian calendar, the crux of Christianity and the hope in our faith. Easter is the highlight of the Christian calendar. Throughout the year, there are special occasions that focus our attention, such as Mother's Day, and then there are special events in Jesus' life that draw our thoughts such as his baptism by John the Baptist. And then there are his miracles and his teachings, like the Sermon on the Mount, or some other texts that draw our focus, but there are only three great celebrations that are highlighted on a yearly basis in most Christian churches. Those are Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost. Beginning with the four Sundays of Advent before Christmas, moving with, into the season between Christmas and Easter with a focus on the life and teaching of Jesus, then the Sundays of Lent and Easter, and finally the seven Sundays that lead up to Pentecost. These Sunday worship services are structured around those three main celebrations of Christmas, which encompasses most of the year. Pentecost, 50 days after Easter, is the celebration when the Holy Ghost dramatically swept over the praying disciples and filled them with the power to begin the movement that would become Christianity. The beginning of the Christian church is traced back to that moment, but really it is not the ultimate celebration in our faith, in our tradition. Christmas being the celebration of the birth of Jesus and all the stories attached also is not the ultimate celebration. In faith, we believe that God became flesh at that moment, and amazing that it is that our God would dwell among us and be one of us, that is not the most amazing truth we celebrate in our faith. The most amazing truth is that God rescued us, redeemed us, brought to us eternal life. The story of Jesus focuses our faith on his death and resurrection. When Jesus was about 30 years of age, he left home and began a three-year-long journey around the countryside, teaching and healing and performing miracles. And many people were healed and amazed by what they saw. Many people were startled by what they heard and many believed. But at the end of those three years of ministry, Jesus was condemned to death on a cross. And his death held an amazing rel relevance for us. Because on the third day, he rose from the grave. The resurrection celebrated at Easter is the highlight of the Christian calendar. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is the crux of Christianity. It is the crux because it is the decisive point at issue. It is a puzzle, a mystery, a difficult matter for our minds to comprehend. Return with me to that scene we read about from Luke 24. The women were coming the day after the Sabbath as soon as possible to prepare the body for final burial. It had only been quickly wrapped and placed in a tomb. The women came knowing where the tomb was and which tomb, expecting to see perhaps some soldier guarding it. But there was no one outside and no one inside to them. The stone at the entrance of the tomb had been rolled away, showing an empty tomb. And as they were wondering, 
they saw two gleaming men, angels. The women returned to the place where the apostles and several other followers of Jesus were gathered and told them what they had witnessed. Peter, in turn, ran to the tomb and saw its emptiness and wondered what really happened to the body of Jesus. Two millenniums later, some people still have doubts and questions while others connect with the stories recorded in the scriptures of the experiences after the resurrection and the writings of the New Testament. We connect emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually with the phrase that Christ is risen. Jesus Christ, who through his actions and teachings demonstrated the power of God, the love of God, and the grace of God, was victorious over death itself. You may interpret the Easter story as allegorical, as a myth, along with many of the stories of Jesus and the Bible. You may follow the teachings and example of Jesus being a blessing to others and this world as a child of God. And I hope for you that in this Easter celebration, a renewal of joy in God and a deeper union with God. Others of you may be skeptical of this story, while still others agree with a literal interpretation as it was taught to you as a child, and you assume it. I encourage each of you to re-examine the story, consider the truth, experience in your spirit the event once again. May this celebration of Easter renew your joy in God and call you into a deeper relationship with God. I believe that Jesus Christ rose from the grave on the third day, victorious over death. He reclaimed eternity. His life did not end in a mortal death, but is an eternal life. It is astounding, amazing. It's a puzzle. But I believe it in faith. The resurrection of Jesus Christ gives us hope for eternity. He promised us life eternal. He claimed it for us and shares it with us. There will be a resurrection. How and when and where we will experience that eternal life of divine presence, I do not know. All I know is that by faith I can claim it and experience it in the present for the eternal future. God's Spirit is with us. God's love is within us. We are loved. We can love and be a blessing. We can live an abundant life that leads us to an eternal life because God's eternal Son rose victorious over the grave and bestowed upon us his eternal promise. Come to the tomb. Gaze at its emptiness. Experience the moment in your spirit. Be moved by the Spirit of God to say in faith, Christ is risen. And may you live an abundant life in that reality as God's loved people with an eternal hope, being a people of faith, and most of all, love. Let us respond as we sing, Thine is the Glory, hymn number 173.
Thank you, Michael, for playing that song and for being here as our guest organist. And thank you to all those that helped put this broadcast together, to David Tonks, Tim Riley, to Carol, to Sheila, and to Bill, and to you, our viewers, who have participated in our worship from home. Now, go in the joy that is ours. Christ is risen. Go into your world in the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit to bring light where there is darkness, food and water to the thirsty, and the bread of life to the seeker. And may your efforts be blessed with the love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and give us peace. Amen.